A lot of YouTubers these days are sponsored by this company called 8Steep. I am not, and I really like their product because it's like a cooling and heating system for your bed. The only problem is the pricing. $4,000 plus a monthly subscription? That seems like a lot and it's a little bit out of my budget. So I thought, can I just DIY it on my own? Why not? It shouldn't be that hard, because when you think about it, inside it there should be just some Peltier modules, pumps, tubing, electronics to control the temperature, and, and that's basically it. Yeah, the system seems to be very simple, but to combine it all together and build a working system, that might be really hard. Let's see how hard can it really be. If you are wondering what is a Peltier module, here it is. It's a very inexpensive piece of ceramic with some semiconductors inside and when you connect voltage to it, it consumes a lot of current. When current is flowing through it, it transfers the heat from the cold side to the hot side. And if you remove the heat from the hot side, it can get pretty cold on the cold side. It depends on the delta T, the difference in temperatures between the sides for the specific Peltier module. I started my experiments with just parts that I had already in my workshop and I used a very cheap heatsink that didn't work very well and I didn't even have a thermal paste, which definitely you should have if you want to experiment with stuff like this. So I bought a bigger heatsink, it was just $10 online. Here are the parts that I used for experiments and most of them I also used later in my complete system. I bought a very cheap thermal paste online, but it seems to work very well. We have a single Peltier module that is rated for about 60 watts. We have a water pump that I bought for this project, but it's very loud. And lastly, we have an aluminum block with two outlets where you can connect the piping and that way easily connect it on top of the Peltier module and cool down the water. I never used thermal paste before so I'm not sure if my technique of applying it to the heatsink is proper. If you have better ideas on how to do it properly please share that in the comments. Let's turn on the fans and the Peltier module. We are consuming almost 5 amperes, that's a lot of current. It's just 12 degrees on the cold side already and it's dropping 10 degrees under 7, under 6 degrees already that is cooling down very very quickly but the coldest part is like almost 0 degrees now and it's already negative I actually don't really need it to be that cold I just need like you know 18 degrees but since I'm already running the test let's see how cold it can get minus 4 degrees and the hot side it's not really that hot, we can see the heatsink heating up a little bit but not really that much it's not really even warm to touch so that's super cool yeah it's even minus 19 in some places will it reach minus 20? yes, minus 20 degrees that is crazy but I don't think it will go lower than that. During the first test I was able to reach minus 20 degrees on the cold side and the aluminum block on top of it just froze. It was super cool to see that the Peltier is working that great. Then I experimented with water and cooling it down in a closed loop system, which worked, but the pump was very very loud. We have a leak. Okay, problem solved. I hope it was leaking from here, so I just secured that with a zip tie and let's connect the pump again. No, I see it now. Okay, it just, it really has to work now. It's still leaking. Uh... In the end, I was able to fix all the leaks and test it for a longer period of time and as you can see, the water cooled down, but the pump was very loud. So I replaced it with a smaller one that I used like a few years ago on a watering system and the pump is very small, it is very silent but quite powerful and seemed to be perfect for this project but the other one, the first one that I used, definitely don't use it for such a project. And yes, the pump is running now, you can see the water flowing here. It is so much quieter, like the difference is huge. <laughs> this was so loud, I definitely couldn't sleep with that running next to me, but with this one I think it's totally doable and the temperature 17.6 degrees 
time to design the enclosure. I just drew some dimensions on a piece of paper without any cut design and I started cutting the boards to proper dimensions. And as the material for the enclosure, I choose OSB board. I think that's how it is called in English, that's how it is called in Polish. So this is the material that I used to do the walls here in the workshop. It's very, very cheap and recently we used it with my brother's son to build an arcade machine that worked very well. If you want, I can make a video about it here on my YouTube channel. And the material is cheap, like that's the biggest plus of it. It's not super easy to work with, it does not look very beautiful, but it's very inexpensive and I still have it a lot after building the workshop, so that's why it is built. It's a prototype, it does not have to be pretty, it just has to work. Here in this wall I want to do some vents so that when this piece will go there, it can cool down actually through the enclosure. But I'm not gonna drill that manually, because I have something special back in my workshop. It's been a while, but it's finally time to use it again. And yes, it works after such a long time. This is the CNC machine that I built like four or five years ago. It's an open source, easy to build CNC machine. More information about it you can find at industry.cc slash indymill. There will be a link in the description. If you would like to build it, you can find all the files for free. You can also buy the instruction to build the indymill and support my work that way and buy some parts for the indymill from my store, which is also linked down in the description. Some time ago someone broke into my workshop and I had to move out very quickly and I lost access to a CNC machine but right now this workshop is almost completely ready. The CNC machine is back so I can use it in the projects. You will be seeing it a lot more now in the future projects and I hope you will enjoy it. The hinges were 3D printed and that worked surprisingly well. I really wanted to spray paint a name of the project on the side of this box and for that I used a single layer stencil that was 3D printed. It's a great method to spray paint names, texts or logos of the project. And the CNC machine that I built was called Indie Mill. The robotic mower that I'm working on is called Indie Mower. So of course this project had to be called Indie Sleep. Acquiring the skills is step one for almost any project of mine. Skillshare, the sponsor of this video, makes that easier and faster than ever. Skillshare is the largest online learning community with thousands of classes led by industry experts. You can find here classes focused on electronics, illustration, Arduinos and even woodworking. Their classes are taught by industry experts so we are always learning from the best. If you notice an improvement in the color grading of my videos, that's thanks to the class by Danda Liu that teaches all the important parts of the process in a concise way. Thanks to the explanation of all the nuances in the color and step-by-step -step formula, grading my videos became much easier. For those interested in robotics, there is an excellent Arduino class by Mark Flamfelder that walks you through everything from setting up the software to programming your first microcontroller. It's a great resource whether you are just starting or need a quick refresher. The first 500 people to use the link in my description will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare. So go check out the link in the description and now back to the video. For the electronics, I just grabbed a protoboard, soldered a few connectors and Arduino MKR1010, which has Wi-Fi, can be easily connected to the internet and also to the Arduino Cloud. Arduino is not sponsoring this video in any way, but the Arduino Cloud is very useful for any kind of IoT projects and because of that, I don't have to add a display or buttons to my box because I can control everything very easily from my computer or smartphone. It's very easy to use and even in the free version, you can do quite a lot. They are not sponsoring this video, but I do like Arduino a lot, so definitely you can check out Arduino Cloud if that's something that will be interesting for your projects. In this project I wanted to collect as much data as I could, the water temperature, cold side, hot side temperature, air temperature inside the enclosure and bed temperature. So I grabbed DS18B20 temperature sensors which are very popular and easy to use with Arduino. I soldered a lot of cables and prepared them in such a nice way. It was totally not worth it and I burnt all of them later and only single one was left working. 
which was very fortunate because I needed at least one to measure the water temperature, so all that work was for nothing. When you start to integrate your project together and connect all the different pieces, something will break, always. When you test a temperature sensor, Pelletier module and the pump separately all works together perfectly, but then suddenly when you connect everything together and theoretically it should work, it never does and it was the case for this project. But after fixing all the boring problems that I'm not going to go through here in the video because it's pretty boring, it started to work, finally. At least I thought so. Right now, almost nothing is working, only one temperature sensor and everything else is completely broken. So I can't really control the Peltier module and the pump. The pump is just always on whatever I set in the Arduino and the Peltier module is never on. And instead of fixing that, I'm gonna use relays because that will work for sure. And I also burned my hand with a thermometer, I still have a mark on my skin. I burned my hand with a device meant to measure temperatures, but somehow I turned it into a heater. And that's how I burned five of these thermometers. The problem was that I somehow burned the 5 voltage regulator on the Arduino, I don't know how and when, but it broke, and because of that the VCC pin that should be 5 volts became 12 volts for some reason, and when I connected the temperature sensors there, of course they were not able to handle 12 volts, they started to overheat and break one by one, and I was left with only single DSB18, DS18B20. It was needed to complete this project because I had to measure the water temperature. Fortunately it worked and I noticed the problem without burning another sensor. You can see it, 25.5 degrees, mm, I set it to like 17 whatever, it's not really that important. And the pump is on, so it should be slowly cooling down. We are running at 12 volts and consuming 5 amps, which is the max of this power supply. And here you can see the water flowing back into the container, through this tube here. Here is the pump pumping the water there, it goes down to the Peltier module that you can barely see right here. Here is the Arduino connected to the temperature sensor and to the relay that control the pump and the Peltier module. And that's it, it's a pretty simple system. Here is my plan. I have this tubing, it's 50 meters long and it will go all the way through my bed and it will be attached to this piece of material. Will it work? I have no idea but I hope it will because it is so hot in here. Sewing was very hard and keeping the tube exactly where I wanted it to was also very hard. Probably attaching it at a lot more points would improve it, but also it just took a lot of time. I'm really not happy with how it turned out, but it's really hard to attach it to a flexible piece of material that is all the time trying to squeeze inside. The distances are quite big and I'm not sure if that will be enough to actually feel any cold in the bed, but that's all I have for now, so I will have to try it. How to do it differently than the tubing? I have no idea, probably like sewing some kind of complicated, you know, thing that can go on top of your mattress with channels for water, that maybe could work. But I am definitely not able to do something like this on my own. And tubing was simple enough to just try it, so I decided to give it a try. After adding a 3D printed adapter to connect the tubing together, I put the system next to my bed and I turned it on and I started to wait and wait and wait and I had to wait a very very long time to actually notice any difference at all on the thermal camera. For the moment I thought the system is not working completely, but I think it does, it's just the small pump and very small tubing and because of that it takes a while to push the water all the way through the bed, it's like 25 meters of tubing. We can already see the tube going there and there and it is slowly going all the way up. But can you really feel it when you lay down? I'm not sure. I mean, maybe I feel something, but also it can be just a placebo effect. It's just not enough of like cooling capacity. The Peltier modules generate a lot more heat than they generate. Coolness not really generate, they just move heat away. I don't know, I would need more Peltier modules bigger power supply, actually a lot of stuff and in the end it will just generate a lot more heat and this room will be 
a lot warmer because of that. After running the system for about an hour, I noticed that the temperature is not going to go any lower than what it already was. It was barely like noticeable with your hands and on the thermal camera you could see that it is in fact lower the temperature but only where the tubing is and nothing other than that. So I started to experiment a little bit more. I added ice to the water container which obviously decreased the water temperature but only for a brief moment and it didn't have a big impact on the temperature in the bed. Then I added some insulation to the board between the heatsink and the water container just to keep it colder which also didn't really help. I tried to sleep with my indie sleep system on and there were a lot of problems. First thing, it only reached 25.5 degrees and wasn't going to go any lower than that. The distance between the tubing is quite big and because of that you can't really feel it with your whole body, you just feel that something is a bit colder under your back. And at this point I understood a few things. I need more Peltier modules and more power to cool down the bed properly, but I also need the tubing to be very dense in the bed to actually make a difference. More power means more powerful power supply, probably like a 12 volt, 30 amp power supply from a 3D printer. And these power supplies are very loud. My system is already loud with the pump and all the fans and with additional power supply, with a big fan inside, it will be so loud that you just couldn't sleep next to it. But then there is a problem, you have a 300 watt system next to your bed running all night. So sure, the temperature inside the bed will be a bit colder, but the entire temperature in your room will go up. So the question is, is it even worth it? I started to wonder how did 8sleep do it that their system just simply works. And I just looked online for some teardown pictures, videos of their pot. And I happened to found a guy on the internet that uploaded 40, I think, two images of a teardown of the 8sleep pot. They are using four Peltier modules, they have two pumps that can cool down and heat up separately two sides of the bed for you and your partner, which is a very nice solution obviously. They have a lot of like simple small improvements like the styrofoam case for the Peltier modules. They have a heatsink that is way smaller than what I have, but they have an Octua fan that is obviously super super quiet and they have like a custom built power supply that seems to have no fans at all. So looking at their system and my system, there's a lot of similarities, but all those little improvements that they did is actually what makes a difference. But the biggest difference in my opinion is their water like closed loop system because for me it was a closed loop in a way that there was a reservoir with the water where it was like coming from the pump through the bed and back to the container with the water but for them there is like a water container that is connected to the tubing through I think some kind of a weird valve that lets them use the water in a really closed loop system that means the water is never going back to the container with the water it is only flowing through the tubing and through the bed which makes it a lot easier to cool down. I do have to say that their system looks like a lot of clever engineering and if it truly works and does not heat up your room that much it's super cool. My system at this point uh, maybe could work as a heating system but not a cooling one. Actually wait, I never tested it as a heating system but soon it will be winter in Poland so it would be cool to have a heating system instead of a cooling system. Let me actually try it now. I swapped the cables going from the Peltier module to the relay and now we are heating the water instead of cooling it. The bed is already very hot in some places, it's almost 30 degrees, which is great because I set it to actually 30 degrees. And Peltier modules are very inefficient at cooling but are just okay as heaters. And such a system makes a lot of sense and because summer is coming to an end and soon there will be winter, it's actually pretty useful to me too. So. That's pretty cool. And you can of course implement the edge bridge in software so that you don't have to swap the cables manually, which makes a lot of sense. Building a cooling system is definitely not that easy and as you can see I failed. But it was a lot of fun and I thought I will share this video anyway to share my experiments and my thoughts with you and if you would like to share your thoughts with me you can do that in the comments. We can discuss all the different possibilities on how to improve this system and maybe in the future once I have all the parts and resources I will just make part 2 of this video and will finally build a working in this sleep system which would be very cool. Thank you very much for watching this video if you are interested in this kind of project or in the mill, check out my other videos and see you in the next one. Bye.